Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to my talk today. Um, disclaimer, I'm not here looking to court controversy or uh, get myself into any kind of trouble. But um, I really felt that somebody needed to ask this question, especially given the long selection in terms of t-shirts, which is an indicator of all of these different projects that exist in the ecosystem and uh, what it really means. Uh, my name is Ram. I work at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Um, we are a Linux Foundation project. Um, and uh, one of the things I get to do is uh, experiment with a lot of the uh, you know, technologies that are out there and um, form opinions and share those opinions and get stickers in exchange for, uh, for sharing these. And I wanted to uh, do this session uh, largely not because of uh, uh, stuff that I have to say, but as an introduction and just airing the question um, about you know what the community feels and what is public perception about this and um, what it is that as a technology community um, we might have as an answer to um, a question like this. Now, my entire talk can be summarized into a single slide. Um, not, not this one, but yeah. Um, this. So for, before any of the pedantic folks in the audience pounce at me, this is not a timeline of when the tools were made. This is a timeline of when I started to learn about these specific tools, um, especially in the CD ecosystem. And um, when I was talking to a lot of people, uh, they seemed to share a similar timeline. Um, we, uh, and, and if you really look at the sort of Cambrian explosion in the number of just continuous delivery tools um, and add to these open source projects and the, just the vendor driven ones and stuff that's proprietary and things like that. It is huge. It's really hard to keep track of. And uh, there seems to be another tool around the corner all the time, um, looking at any of the dagger folks in the room and uh, maybe some of the pipe CD folks too. And um, it's been, a very interesting set of things that I learned about the kind of small niche gaps that are starting to come up in tools as they um, as they start to become broader in terms of adoption and as they see more and more um, users uh, get in on them and things like that. And um, yeah, I just wanted to share that you know this is all that I know about CD tools. And um, if you were to cut this down by tools that I've actually had a chance to try something with, uh, the list looks something like that. Um, and then if you really pare it down to stuff that I've um, actually used in production, uh, it eliminates another good chunk of the tools that I uh, know something about. And um, if you were to look at CD tools that I know how to configure myself for production use, it turns out that I am a Jenkins person, and I didn't know about it. Um, it it's it's the one tool that uh, I've I've used. Uh, I mean, I I'm fully confident of using for a lot of the use cases that come my way. And um, you know, I'm being I I'm a Jenkins user, but I identify as what some Argonaut or something like that. Um, I I keep talking about all of these fancy cloud native CI CD tools uh, whenever I speak to people. But it turns out that deep down, that's, uh, that's really who I am. Um, and so the motivation for the talk um, came from here. So why is it that you know, the, the industry at large felt the need for investing in or committing to more and more tools? And the more I sp spoke to people, the more answers I got. Um, there, there were very, uh, like I mentioned, there were varied use cases. There were uh, questions, of, uh, there were comments about um, here's a very specific niche requirement that our engineering team had and we couldn't do it with tool X and therefore we set, went out and started off on a new project. A lot of people are a new, or a lot of uh, these projects are just independent uh, projects themselves because they originated in a sort of walled garden inside 
a company and then they became like CD foundation projects and independent uh, tools and things like that. And so because of the nature of the problem that they set out to solve and because of the niche use cases that they really served, it looks like there's a lot of these tools that are out there and that are present. And there's a very thriving, diverse ecosystem, which I wholeheartedly welcome. Uh, but at times it, you know, I, I do wake up in the middle of the night with a question about, uh, but why couldn't this just be a feature inside Argo instead of being a project of its own? So there are um, areas where, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've tried to really sit down and uh, discover what are distinctions between these tools and where they really um, come together and where they differ. And again, these are some stuff that I've uh, discovered by myself. Um, and, and I'm happy to be uh, corrected if it's not true. And so I just wanted to quickly summarize for uh, in a few minutes the whole Tecton versus Argo sort of discussion, which I feel represents more fairly uh, two, uh, two sort of players as opposed to this being a Jenkins versus anybody else discussion, which can be um, a, a whole different game by itself. So um, just between these two tools, I think uh, when I started to discover Tecton, um, versus when I discovered Argo, my path to utilizing or putting the tool to use was very different and distinct because uh, Tecton came with this ability to configure pipelines and composite uh, tasks and things like that, made a pipeline and uh, that became a larger workflow and things like that. Versus with Argo, it was more definitive in terms of workflows and uh, CD and uh, rollouts and all of these things. Um, and so just learning these principles was very different between using the two tools. Um, Argo also came with a UI, and I think it helps a lot when you're just starting off with the tool. Um, again, this is not reflective as a negative opinion on the way Tecton does things. Um, it is just a path that they chose, um, which I totally respect them for it. But um, YAML engineering is hard, <laughs> and uh, uh, that, that put adopting Argo uh, slightly um, on, on, the, on the easier side. Uh, they're both very extensible tools. Um, I think Argo comes with a bunch of plugins and integrations and things like that. Um, Tecton comes with its uh, very extensible, again, because it's very declarative, very extensible um, list of custom resources and things like that. Um, if you're fully sold into the Kubernetes ecosystem of uh, everything should run on Kubernetes, including CI, CD. I think Tecton is a great case for that and makes um, makes it very convenient to do that versus on Argo, you're, you could uh, step off the Kubernetes for the CI, CD bit. Uh, there's also some stuff that I've learned about the whole Spinnaker versus screwdriver debate. And as I started to make notes for what I should say on this slide, it seemed like the very same discussion. So whatever was Argo versus Tecton seemed to apply to Spinnaker versus Screwdriver and seemed to apply to you know, any of the other tools that are out there. Um, which really meant that you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of scope for bringing in um, CI, CD tools that serve a certain purpose, uh, but there's also a little bit of difficulty in justifying the sprawl after a bit. So uh, yeah, these are uh, the opinions I had. Uh, I'm Ram Iyengar on social media. I'm very happy to hear what folks think about it. Again, I love the direction that a lot of the new tools are taking and the new projects are uh, uh, going in. But uh, you know, I really think as a community from time to time, we should ask ourselves the question, do we really need a new CI CD tool? Um, to be honest. So that's my presentation. Thank you for uh, coming to my talk. Um, have a great summit. Um, and I thought the best thing I could do uh, in this session was end a bit early so you can all have lunch early. So uh, I hate being the person standing between uh, uh, food and uh, uh, the attendees. So um, again, don't be a stranger. I'm happy to answer uh, any questions, uh, get feedback, and uh, um, hear opinions and stories that other people might have. Thank you so much.